Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the studios today. Our focus today is on the continent we live in. I'm joined in studio today by the Regional Director of Africa Muslims Agency, Direct Aid International, Hafiz Hassan Chunara. Welcome to the studio. Shukran, Brother Rahman. It's a pleasure being here. Hafiz Hassan, to comment, share with us some brief history of Africa Muslims Agency. Uh, Africa Muslims Agency was started in the early 1980s by a gentleman named Dr. Abdurrahman al-Sumayt, uh, who was late. Uh, in the early 1980s, Dr. Rahman traveled through Africa, through various parts of Africa, Malawi, Madagascar, Gambia. And on seeing the plight of the people in Africa, he, they, in response to their plight, rather, he started the organization called Africa Muslims Agency. In 1987, uh, Dr. Rahman al came to South Africa. He met my late father, uh, the former director of Africa Muslim Agency, uh, Muhammad Farid, mm-hmm. to start the organization in South Africa, which he, he started. And, uh, and there, there began many of the activities that we know Africa Muslim Agency carry out in South Africa and other parts of Africa. African Muslims Agency, Direct Aid International, as we know, uh, is an organization with, with its head office in Kuwait, uh, with offices in 29 countries in Africa, established um, with the last 30 years, alhamdulillah. Uh, and also uh, doing a carry, which carries out many programs and projects and campaigns throughout the year, whether it be seasonal campaigns proje- uh, or ongoing projects for campaigns. That we, uh, that we say some of the seasonal campaigns, if I may mention, is the you know the winter warmth as we're going towards winter. Uh, we're preparing for the winter distribution of the winter warmth packs and blankets in various parts of South Africa and Southern Africa. Uh, also, we have the Ramadan feed the fasting program which is also on our doorstep, uh, and we have the Odhiyya Qurbani program that we carry out at various masajid and dawah centers uh, around uh, Africa. These are the seasonal projects, and the ongoing projects are, you know, the construction of the water wells, the boreholes, the homes, the masajid. These are built and constructed through the generosity of donors in South Africa, uh, and these are done in remote villages in Africa. Some of the other ongoing projects is obviously seen to the needs of the orphans, uh, the bursary, and, and other various programs, as well as relief and humanitarian, like Somalia 1992, like Somalia 2011, like our response to Burma and Mozambique. And now also we, today we're talking about Central African Republic and our current response to Central African Republic. So these are our ongoing projects and seasonal projects, apart from the repatri- repatriation and empowerment programs that we conduct throughout the year. Well, before we speak about Central African Republic, tell us what your job and your involvement in Africa Muslims Agency entails. Well, Abdul Rahman, I, I basically grew up in the organization with my late father being the director uh, since 1987. So I was born into the work. Uh, you know, my, my late father used to always take us to the various programs that was happening. It was taking place. For example, if he was going to Soweto uh, in the apartheid days to do Dawa programs, he would take us with, uh, and, and we used to see, the, you know, the work that he used to do and, and, and the various programs that he undertook. And he used to travel a lot through Africa, you know, through Gambia, Malawi, Mozambique, uh, and we, 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 we shouldn't see him for months uh, on end. Uh, you know, he should travel through Africa to see the condition of the people and come back home and show us pictures of the, you know, the living conditions of people and how they lived and how, what they ate and what they did. And, uh, and that way we learned a lot from the current and we exposed a lot of the conditions of people in Africa. And so we, it, it was inculcated us to have a servant attitude to serve people. And, uh, and obviously when my late dad passed away uh, in 2011, uh, Hafez Imran Shunara was officially appointed by the head office in Kuwait to be the director and uh, me to be the regional director to continue the work in South Africa as well as other parts of, uh, of Africa. Well, the focus today is on Central African Republic. It has been in the media spotlight for the last few months. Um, we've been covering it on news at ITV, but naturally you have some sort of a presence as Africa Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International on the ground in Central African Republic. Share with us what have been some of the experiences and uh, the type of atrocities that have been witnessed by the team on the ground? Rahman, um, you know, the, like you mentioned, Africa Muslims Agency has offices in 29 countries in Africa for the last 30 years, alhamdulillah. So it makes it, it, makes it I would say, much, uh, much more easier for us or we could respond to the hour of need within, a, within an instant because we have, already have teams on the ground 
Uh, and like we have teams in Chad right now who are seeing to the need of the people who are entering those refugee camps on a daily basis. You're asking about the situation on the ground right now. And I hope I can do justice to explain to you the first-hand accounts of our teams on the ground. Uh, how, uh, how do I explain the situation of young children walking into those camps uh, who've been handicapped by abuse uh, through the atrocities that are currently happening in Central African Republic, who have lost their families along the way, who do not know where the families are, and, they, and you have to console them and advise them and let them know that it's going to be okay. What, what future lies ahead of them? This is the current uh, conditions of, of, uh, in the relief camp, but the situation in Central African Republic is dire. Many people are in need, relief and humanitarian need. Over 2.2 million people are right now in need. Well, much more to discuss about this conflict that's unfolding on our continent. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the short break. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, our in-studio guest today is Hafiz Hassan Chunara, the Regional Director of Africa Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International. Hafiz Hassan, before the break, you mentioned 2.2 million people mm -hmm. in the Central African Republic in need of aid. Mm -hmm. How do we get to such a huge number of people in need of aid in just over a year? Rahman, uh, just to explain you know, the current situation on the ground and, and related to your question of how we have 2.2 million people right now in need, um, as we know, the situation is volatile, it's tense, uh, a lot of attacks and, and, and violence is taking place within Bangui, the, country, the capital of Central African Republic, as well as other parts of the country. Many people have been forced to flee their homes, their homes have been illegally occupied, their belongings have been taken away. Masajid, over 300 Masajid have been torched or, or burned down in various parts of Central African Republic. And therefore, we have 2.2 million, 2 .2 million people who are seeking urgent assistance right now of which 600,000 people are internally displaced within the country at the moment and are seeking a, uh, you know, seeking a safe haven and shelter. Um, those who do survive the torture and the ongoing atrocities within the Central African Republic, those who do come through the camps uh, and the first-hand first -hand accounts of the people in the camps who are giving us the information, is that most of them are children, the elderly, the women, or the disabled. Many of them have lost their families along the way. You can imagine, you know, people uh, you know, breaking into your homes, asking you to leave, torturing the family members. And you have young children having to leave their families behind and go seek shelter or look for a safe haven. Some of the children have lost their limbs along the way, been physically abused or tortured, and they're entering the camps. Imagine the torture and trauma they, they're now going through. One, they've traveled many kilometers in search of food or livelihood. They've been physically handicapped by the, by, by the violence, but they've also lost their families. And now you have to console them and explain to them what their future, or explain to them and portray a picture of what their future lies ahead of them. One is seeing to their hour of need, seeing to their basic uh, you know, food and urgent need of assistance. But imagine explaining to them and, and, and trying to console that trauma, that child, explain to him, young man, your future, this is your future, and we do not know where your family is, and try to you know, see to him on a day-to-day -day basis. Many people who do flee their homes uh, don't make it to the refugee camps. These are the lucky few who do uh, uh, get to the camps. But there are many who, who, who lose their lives along the way through starvation or through thirst or hunger. And this is a sad reality right now in Central African Republic. With the teams on the ground, some of them have been based at these refugee camps, some internally in Central African Republic, others on bordering countries like Chad. Mm -hmm. What type of relief work has been undertaken up until this point? Well, the, the camps are mostly situated on the borders of Central African Republic because Central African Republic right now is a volatile situation. Uh, you know, nobody's allowed to enter there or do any work. So we've set up camps together with the United Nations, with the UNHCR, at the borders of Central African Republic and Chad, as well as closer to Cameroon, where over 900,000 people have entered through Cameroon right now in seeking assistance, uh, you know, as well as uh, Chad. So we've set up camps. Our teams are right now, African Muslims, Asian teams are on the ground at these camps in Duba, in Saar, closer to Chad, seeing to the needs of the people, the relief and humanitarian, as well as medical assistance, uh, and, and dishing out food baskets right now, which contain, uh, you know, maize, flour, sugar, oil, rice, blankets, etc. Uh, and also, we are see, like we said, we are trying to, uh, our doctors there and, and people, personnel on the ground, are also uh, not only seeing to the hour of need, but also trying to console those who have come in, who have experienced this trauma in Central African Republic, and trying to assist them. For example, you have a, a mother in the camp who's now seeing too many children 
who are not hers, but now they are based at a kin. And how do you explain or console her or counsel her to say that these are not your children, you've lost your children in Central African Republic back home, we do not know their fate, but now you have to take care of these children who are with you at these camps. This is the sad situation in, in CR right now. Well, another would be the idea of other service providers also being there at the face of service in terms of delivering aid. From amongst the significant partnerships that African Muslims Agency have forged, particularly servicing the people of the Central African Republic, which names stand out for you? Well, we've partnered with the UNHCR as well as the Chadian government. Uh, there's no one organization can, can, can come in because of the volatility of the situation and, and just undertake a relief operation. So because of our presence already within the, uh, these parts of the world for the last 30 years and the work that we continue to do, alhamdulillah, uh, and we have to forge partnerships with the UNHCR who've set up camps already in the borders of Chad and Central African Republic and to get permission from the uh, various government authorities from Chad, we have undertaken the relief efforts uh, in, in, in these, these relief camps. If my memory serves me correctly, Africa Muslims Agency had a presence in terms of 30 officers in 29 different mm. countries, or is it 29 officers in 30 different countries? Yeah, um, there were officers in Central African Republic. What has become of these? Right now, as you speak, the office in Central African Republic, the operations uh, and the activities has uh, stopped for a while because of the violence, the ongoing violence. Uh, in Central African Republic, and therefore the office in Chad has undertaken the relief efforts uh, on the borders of Chad and starts receiving all the refugees and IDPs that are entering the various refugee camps that we are present in at the moment. So yes, the office in CAR, because of the tense situation, because of the violence, we have stopped the activities and focusing all the activities on the refugees who are entering Cameroon and Chad is it, right now. Has the relief aid from the side of African Muslim Agency been limited to just merely food? Or has it extended to beyond just food parcels for those who are where the teams on the ground are based? Well, it extended beyond, just to give you some stats and figures of, of, of the kind, uh, of the amount of relief aid has been distributed and what has been distributed. Uh, over 250 tons, alhamdulillah, since the violence has broken out in December till now, over 250 tons of uh, relief, uh, when I say relief aid, I mean food and, and uh, parcels have been distributed to the various relief camps. Uh, right now, over the next few days, we intend distributing 150 tons of non-food items to these camps, which include uh, your know, medical supplies as well as your blankets, your tent shelter, and basic amenities to keep people, uh, uh, you know, busy throughout the day. Some some sort of activity to do activities with them through in these relief camps. So one is seen to the hour of need, giving them the food uh, and the, the basic necessities that they currently need, the water, etc. And then the second phase is to try to get keep them busy and 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 give them some sort of uh, work to, while they are uh, situated the, at the camp. Different dimensions to tackle, many more to tackle. But after this short break, please stay with us. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Welcome back to our studios. With us in studio is Hafiz Hassan Chunara, who's been explaining to us a little bit more about the situation in the Central African Republic. Hafiz Hassan, before we went for that ad break, you were mentioning two types of aid, food aid and non-food aid. What do each of these two types of aid entail? Yes, you know, as you mentioned, the camps that have been set up in the borders of Chad and Central African Republic and the teams are already on the ground, the type of aid that they are uh, delivering right now or distributing at the, uh, at the uh, to the refugees who are coming in. One is the food items, the other is the non-food items. The food items consist of a food basket uh, which, uh, which has a rice, maize, oil, sugar, flour, um, as well as other basic amenities for people to, uh, you know, for, for them to continue on a daily basis to have the food, to have the water. The non-food items are the water, uh, the blankets, sorry, the tents, uh, the medical supplies, the people who are uh, seen to the refugees who are coming in who, are, who have been afflicted by the atrocities in, in Central African Republic. So that's the non-food items. This is two different uh, aid that we're offering. And, one, and the other, if you want to add, is the... Uh, one really con trying to console those, like you mentioned earlier in the interview, trying to console those who have come in to explain to them, you know, they've seen atrocities that happened to their families from where they've just come, and to explain to them and try to assist them through the tra traumatic time. Uh, you know, some of them have lost their, you know, their, their, their children, some have lost their parents along the way, to console them, to help them, uh, and to counsel them. Uh, because, like we said, many children, which is said to note, many children have been afflicted by the violence, by either losing their families or being uh, physically handicapped by losing their limbs. 
and now it's some sort of consolation and, 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 and some sort of comfort uh, moving forward. How many people have so far been assisted by virtue of the aid that has already been dispensed towards them uh, at the various camps? Well, some of these camps are set up to, to accommodate plus minus 10,000 persons. But you can imagine what the violence is currently happening in Central African Republic. Thousands are fleeing. Just reports we get from our team this past week. In this past week, quite a few thousand people have fled to the camps. Uh, uh, to, to in, you know, seeking for assistance, urgent assistance. So these camps are oversubscribed. If you know, quality, uh, you know, and many people are there. Just the past few weeks, we had figures of over twenty-one thousand persons being assisted in uh, one camp alone in Chad, uh, and obviously another camp of fourteen thousand people have been assisted through these food baskets. Uh, that have been distributed and with the 150 tons that we plan to roll out within the next few days, much more will be assisted. And you can imagine right now, as you speak, Abdurrahman, with the violence that's ongoing right now, many more are fleeing their, uh, their homes and are seeking shelter and will be coming to these camps. So, uh, you know, a call is made out to the donors out there to sponsor towards these food baskets uh, and come to the aid of those in need. Well, most of the camps oversubscribed, mm. uh, those that we've seen, you know, highlighted in the media spotlight, as well as the ones where Africa Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International have a presence, mm. uh, the food baskets you've mentioned, the non-food items. What are some of the costs associated to sponsoring these items? And how can anyone who feels for people on this continent where Allah has made us resident, how can they get involved? Well, the cost of a food basket, non-food item, complete pack will be 1,500 rand for a complete uh, uh, relief pack. It will be, it's currently been distributed at the moment in the various relief camps. So anybody wants to sponsor towards, through, towards the CIR crisis, uh, contact our offices in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, or Indonesia, or go to the website Africa Muslims Agency. The contact details are on the screen. Uh, and just go to the website, the information on CIR and what we're doing at the moment, what AM is doing on the ground, what is the current situation, what is the need, is all on the website. And they may donate online as well, or call any of the consultants around the country, and they may be explained, uh, give you more information on what we're doing in CIR and what's the, and what's the uh, urgent need right now. Jazakumullah khair and Hafiz Hassan for your time and for giving us this interview here at ITV. Shukran, it's a pleasure being here. Well, beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will firstly hold us accountable for those closest to our homes. While there may be many areas of need in different parts of the globe, note that this is the continent where Allah has chosen for many of us to be born and for the rest of us to live. Respond to this need first to secure your akhirah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله From Mauritania to Ethiopia From Tunisia to Somalia We are the children of Africa لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله